Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a Vlogmas Day 20 and for Vlogmas Day 20 I thought I would do another story time. I've only done one story time on my channel so I thought that I would do another one because I really enjoyed doing the first one. And I also chose this specific story because it happened about eight or nine years ago on Christmas Eve so I thought I would share with you guys this story time. This story time is about a time that me and my friend at the time got in a car accident. We were in a, I would say, pretty bad car accident. The car did flip three times. So I will just begin with this story. I would say this was maybe about nine years ago, I believe. I think I was about 19 or 20. I know I wasn't older than 20. I was between 19 or 20 when this happened. And me and my friend at the time were actually on the way to her family's Christmas Eve party. And it wasn't super late. It was starting to get dark outside, but it wasn't completely dark out yet. And my friend was the one who was driving and I was in the passenger seat. Now this accident I felt like was in like slow motion. I felt like it was never going to end. So what happened was me and my friend were driving straight. There were three lanes of cars. We were all the way in the last lane and we were driving straight. Now the guy who hit us was coming from this way. So like I said, I don't know if he didn't see us, which I find it hard to believe that he didn't see us or if he just thought he would be able to speed up and make it in front of us, but he hit us on the side, on the driver's side. Now I was on the passenger seat and I remember I was texting and my friend was the one who was driving. Now all I remember is my friend saying, oh my gosh, and when she said that and I looked over to her, all I remember seeing was the bright, bright headlights. Like I said, it wasn't completely dark outside, but the sun was starting to go down, so it was a little dark. So all I remember is looking at her when she said that and seeing just the bright headlights from that guy's car. After that, all I remember is hearing the metal crushing from when he hit us on the side. He hit us on her door. So he hit us on her door. I remember hearing all of the metal just crushing. So when he hit us, we flipped. When we flipped, obviously we weren't wearing our seatbelts, so we were kind of getting thrown around in the car and all the windows pretty much broke out within the first flip that we had. Every window in that car broke out other than her front windshield. That windshield was completely cracked and like shattered, but it didn't break out. Every other window did break out. So I remember thinking to myself, well, I don't wanna fly out of the windows. So I remember trying to hold on to the passenger seat, but we flipped three times. So every time you would flip, we would just get thrown down. So there was just no way I was able to hold on to the passenger seat. And I remember the other thing that I kept on thinking was that another car was going to hit us because we were in the very last lane to the left. There were a total of three lanes. So when we were flipping, we were flipping into the other lanes. And I remember I just kept on thinking that another car wasn't gonna be able to stop and was going to hit us while we were flipping. So I remember I kept on closing my eyes and just pretty much bracing. I was tensing up and bracing for like another car to hit us. Cause like I said, we were flipping into other lanes. So we flipped a total of three times. So after the car finished flipping, we ended up landing in her back seat. Cause like I said, we were not wearing our seat belts. So we went from being in the front of the car to landing in the back of the car. Now, when the car finished flipping, we did land on the hood and the car kept on sliding after landing on the hood. So after we landed in the back and the car stopped moving, I remember just smelling a lot of oil and gas. So we were terrified that the car was going to like explode or catch on fire and we thought to ourselves, well, we didn't die in this car accident. We didn't fly out the window or anything, so we don't want to die in a fire. So all, like I said, all of her windows had broke out. So since we landed in the back seat, we tried to crawl out of the back window that had broke out. She was in front of me, so she crawled out first. So after she crawled out, I went to crawl out after her. And all of a sudden when I went to move, I just felt the most worst, sharpest pain I've ever felt in my back. It was so bad and I just couldn't move. Like my back was in that much pain. So I was able to kind of like crawl out a little bit. So my upper half of my body was out of the car and then the bottom half of my body was still in the car just because I was in so much pain. So I'm now just laying halfway in the car and halfway out of the car because I had so much pain in my back. 
Next thing I remember is a guy coming over to me. Until this day, I get goosebumps. My mom and I both believe that it was my guardian angel. I do believe in guardian angels. My mom used to always tell me, my sister, ever since we were a little kid, that everyone has their own guardian angel. So. I remember when I was younger, I used to always ask my mom, is my guardian angel a boy or is it a girl? And my mom would always tell me, only you know, that only you know what your guardian angel is. And now we believe that my guardian angel is a guy. So the reason why I think my guardian angel is a gentleman is because the first person who ran up to the car to see if me and my friend were okay from the accident was an older guy. I remember he looked like he was maybe in his mid forties, I would say. And he was wearing those like little jumper suits that people usually wear when they work in car dealerships. I remember it was just like a one piece all navy blue suit that pretty much looked like he worked at a car shop. Now I will get to why I think that this gentleman was my guardian angel but first I'm going to explain what happened and what he said and everything when he came up to me. So he walked up to me and he was trying to ask me questions, ask me if I was okay, my name and everything but I think I was such in a shock that I couldn't speak. I was pretty much mute. I just was crying a lot he was trying to calm me down because I was hyperventilating he didn't want me to pass out or anything so he was pretty much trying to keep me awake because I guess I kept on closing my eyes and so he was holding my neck and he kept on asking me what is your name how old are you do you know what today's date is do you know where you are just questions like that and for a while like I said I wasn't speaking I was just completely mute so there was another guy kneeling down next to me now since I wasn't responding to the first guy that guy thought I just didn't understand English and started asking the same exact questions, but in Spanish, but I still wasn't responding to him either. I was just completely mute. And then after about a minute or two, then I finally started talking. And then I told him about the pain in my back where I couldn't move, that it was like really, really painful. So he was holding my neck and he didn't want to move me because he didn't know how severe my injury was or what was wrong. So basically he was just holding my neck and keeping me calm. I kept on saying, I don't know, I was tired and I kept on trying to close my eyes. He kept on saying, no, you can't close your eyes. You can't go to sleep. You need to stay awake. And pretty much just asking me a million questions and being really, really sweet. So there was a bunch of other bystanders. There was at least, I remember three or four other people on the phone calling 911. So since we flipped three times in our car, we thought the other car had a lot of damage too and they might've been hurt. So my friend ran over to go find that car to see if those people were okay. Well, the person who hit us, I don't know if maybe he panicked and he thought that he killed us or what, but he tried to flee the scene. After he hit us, he sped off. And the only reason why he was caught was because there was really good bystanders and those bystanders pretty much boxed him in and blocked him in and held him down until the police got there. Now, this guy didn't have insurance. He didn't come to see if we were okay. He didn't ask if we were okay. He pretty much tried to leave the scene. And the only thing I can think of is that he saw how bad our car was and how we flipped three times. And he was probably scared that we were, one of us was dead or something. But yeah, I we were really upset about that because my friend, you know, obviously was going to see if they were okay while they were really trying to leave the scene, not trying to see if we were okay. We were upset about that, but then finally the ambulance gets there. So I remember the guy who was holding my neck was speaking to the paramedics. I remember like my vision was kind of blurry, I remember, but I remember him talking to the paramedics, letting him know how old I was because I told him how old I was, telling them my name and what I was complaining about from pain. And I remember while the paramedics were, put me, were putting me on like that backboard and putting a neck brace on me, the guy who was originally holding my neck came back up to me and he pretty much just like brushed my hair and told me, sweetheart, you're going to be okay. God bless you. God is with you now. You're you're in good hands now. I can leave. And that's what he said. And I remember when he walked away, he pretty much just like disappeared into the crowd of people. When I say like he disappeared, like he walked off and then like I couldn't see him anymore. Like I saw every other person that was, you know, trying to help us and calling paramedics, but he just pretty much just disappeared into the crowd. So I don't know, I believe that that was my guardian angel who came and who was with me and who kept me calm and let me know that I was going to be okay. I believe that that was my guardian angel and I'll forever think that that guy was my guardian angel in the blue jumper suit. But then after he left, the paramedics loaded me up into the ambulance. So after the paramedics loaded me up into the ambulance and they called my mom. Now, I guess paramedics are not allowed 
to say certain things to family members when they call when there's an accident like that they didn't pretty much didn't tell my mom like what my status was if I was alive or anything they pretty much just scared the crap out of my mom they called my mom and they told my mom your daughter and her friend was in a car accident their car flipped three times she's in the ambulance on the way to the hospital didn't tell her anything else didn't tell her that I was breathing didn't tell her that I was alive so all my mom knew was that me and my friend were in a car accident and we flipped three times and we were rushed to the hospital that's all she knew I get to the hospital and they had to do a lot of x-rays on me for my back pain and I remember it was having to stay in the neck brace until those x-rays came back and it was so uncomfortable I remember I had glass like all in my hair and everything so the result had came back I had like I believe six or seven pulled ligaments in my back and that was causing all of the pain and then I also sprained my right arm and that was pretty much all from injuries that we got well that I got I got a sprained arm and then seven pulled ligaments in my back and then other than that we did have a lot of scratches and bruises when the airbag exploded it did like burn me a little bit like on my mouth so my mouth was a little bit burnt and then my mouth was also busted because I hit my mouth on the concrete when we were flipping and then I had like scrapes everywhere so pretty much it just looked like I got jumped and I had bruises places that I didn't even know you can get bruises so I pretty much had bruises everywhere all over my body my mouth was busted and everything but other than that we survived the police officer told us that we were extremely lucky to be alive which i know we were extremely lucky to come out of that accident with such small injuries one we weren't wearing our seat belts and also a bystander who saw the accident said that every time we would flip that we pretty much just look like ping balls in the car that they kept on seeing me and my friend flying around in the car and that they were just waiting for one of us to get thrown out of the car so the fact that we weren't wearing our seat belts and every single window broke out other than the front window and none of us flew out of the car is amazing two we did not get hit by another car like i told you guys we flipped into two other lanes at that time no cars were going through those lanes so we didn't get hit by any car and the last thing that was really scary that i didn't even know i was told by the police officer was that after we finished flipping and we landed on the hood i told you guys we kept on sliding i didn't know we were that close to the edge on the bridge they said that if we would have flipped just one more time, that we would have fell off the bridge. Now, below that bridge was a um, highway. So if we would have kept on sliding a few more inches or flipped one more time, our car would have flipped over to the bridge and landed into the cars below us. So the cops said that, you know, we were really, really lucky to be alive from not wearing our seatbelts to not flying out of the car to not getting hit by another car and by pretty much being one flip away from falling off of the bridge. So yeah, that was the only accident I've ever been in. I've been in a few other accidents before, but they were really, really small, minor like fender benders. That was the only accident that was really, really severe. And ever since that accident, I don't like driving. I don't like being in a car. You would think it happened nine years ago that I wouldn't have that much anxiety from it, but I do. Anytime a car like cuts me off or anything, like I get really bad anxiety. I just don't like cars anymore. I remember I used to love to drive and after that accident, I have just been forever traumatized. That is my story. My friend and I survived flipping three times in a car. And like I said, my only injuries I had was a sprained arm, seven pulled ligaments in my back, and busted lip and pretty much just looking like I got jumped. I also believe that my guardian angel and Jesus was with me and my friend at the time. It wasn't our time to go. We survived this accident for a reason. I'm glad we did because this was on Christmas Eve and I can't imagine my mom or her parents getting a call on Christmas Eve that something horrible had happened to us. So I'm so grateful and thankful to my guardian angel and to God and Jesus that they were with us, they protected us, and that we survived. I really wish I would have saved the pictures of the car so I can show you guys because if you guys were to see the pictures, you would think there's no way someone survived that accident being in that car. That is how bad the car was after the accident. So yeah, that is my story for my car accident. Hopefully I don't ever have to experience anything like that in my life ever again because that was a very traumatic experience for me and my friend. Okay guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. This story time was a more serious story time versus my other story time, which was a more funnier one. I did tell you guys my story time, some will be serious ones, tough times in my life, and some will be funny. So I decided to share this story with you guys. 
One, because it happened on Christmas Eve, and two, like I said, I want to share more serious times of my life with you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my story time. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would really love if you would consider subscribing to my channel, hitting that subscribe button, and joining me and my YouTube family. I will see you guys next time. Bye.